Okay, well, we'll call the meeting to order of the Deerfield School Committee on uh, Tuesday, October 6, 2020. This um, is a meeting, a virtual meeting, and it is being recorded. Um, and I uh, just uh, wanted to get things started. So um, the first item on the agenda is to review and approve the minutes of August 19th and September 20th, 2020. So I don't know if we'd have a motion or everyone's had a chance to look at the minutes. I didn't get the minutes of September 10th out until last night. My apologies. That's okay. Um, so I could I could make a motion. This is Trevor McDaniel. I can make a motion to, um, to approve the minutes of Wednesday, August nineteenth, twenty twenty. Do we have a second? Second that. Okay, David. Any discussion or any notations? Hearing none. A roll call vote. Mary. Yes. Trevor? Yes. David? Yes. And Carrie? Yes. Okay, thank you. And Ken cut it back, yes. Uh, minutes of September 10th. Did people have enough time to read them, or do you want to? No. I'm good. I could make a motion to approve the minutes of uh, September 10th, 2020. Okay. Do we have a second? I'll second, second. that. Here. Oh, well. Gary's got it. <laughs> Gary's got it. Any other discussion on it? Um, hearing none, I'll, we'll do a roll call again. Mary? Yes. Trevor? Yes. Gary? Yes. David? Yes. And Ken Cutterback, yes. I have nothing. They are approved. Okay. Financial statement and warrants. Shelly. Hi. Good evening. Um, so how are you? <laughs> um, I shared out the reports electronically. I'm happy to take questions about them. There's not really a whole lot to report on the financials this month. Um, I'm not really concerned about any of the general fund accounts. You will see a few negatives on there. There are things that I knew about and that we do have um, funds and other line items, but nothing substantial really to report on there. Um, but again, happy to take questions on individual line items if you have them. And uh, you all reviewed and signed electronically 12 warrants since the last meeting, totaling $55,630.02. Um, otherwise, there's not a whole lot. You know, we're, we talked about um, early childhood being an issue, so that's still something ongoing that I'm reviewing. Um, right now, we're looking at about an $8,000 end of year projection. Not much money at all, just something that we're going to need to continue to work on. Um, I did look at the meal counts for school lunch. You know, we had this gradual phase in, so there really haven't been a significant amount of children in the building to serve. And Deerfield's also not a pickup location, so the meal service there is not as significant as some of the other schools. Um, but we'll con continue to monitor that. Um, we are eligible for $2.20 per breakfast served, and I believe lunch is $3.20. 35 or 40 cents, something around there. So it's not a lot of income coming in, but it's certainly something that hopefully will at least cover food costs once we have more students um, eating lunch. Um, one other thing to mention is we had talked last month about potential increase out of district costs, and we have had some additional expenses already. Um, I added a $23,000 expense out of district tuition for a student um, from the special education revolving fund. Thankfully, that fund had enough of a rollover to cover this spend expense and still has about $40,000, my projection at the end of the year. So we're not fully depleting that account, but certainly dwindling it down and overspending compared to what we have coming in. Um, but we didn't have a choice. We needed to pay this extra tuition. Mm -hmm. um, and then my understanding is that we still have one other child um, in consideration that might be an out-of-district placement as well. It's a family who just moved to Deerfield. 
um, the student wants to stay in the other district, his family would like the child, him or her, I'm sorry, I don't know if it's a boy or girl, the, the family would like the child to stay in the other district. Um, Karen is still working closely with the school and the family to work out those needs and, and talking with Tina and Elaine as well. Um, and I'll hopefully have more information about that next month, but that's on the radar too. Is that, uh, is that a special education or right? Okay. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then the last thing, just a little COVID update. So we are working with the town administrator uh, to see if there's any Municipal CARES Act funding available in the second round that the town is going to receive. We've already submitted $65,000 in the first round that we uh, put in for in May. That was primarily for technology, Chromebooks and licenses. Um, there was a little bit of uh, what the state is categorizing as cleaning materials. We bought an electrostatic sprayer, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you look on the school choice report, I've been having um, the staff pay for things out of school choice, knowing that I could easily move that money around if we needed to. So there's about 20,000 in expenses there that we are gonna request to see if the town has any additional CARES Act funding. And then after talking with Tina this week and also Scott Paul, our IT director, um, we might be asking for another 50,000 in technology for smart boards and things like that that are needed to enhance the hybrid learning model. Um, you know, we don't, never know what we're gonna get from the towns. I don't know what their availability is. I know that Casey's trying to balance the needs of all of the town departments and still take care of the school. So we're, we're gonna ask and um, we'll see what we receive. Unfortunately, some of those things, you know, if we don't get funding from the Town Municipal Cares Act, then we will have to put them on hold. Um, but you know, if we can get them now, that would be great. How much can I? Ask? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, does anyone else want to ask a question? No, go ahead, Trevor. Um, I was just curious about the. Um, do we have a figure of what DES uh, has for COVID? Um, money from the state and um and then and then you know what you plan to spend it all on and, and how much yeah i can give you a little bit of a summary so um i have to pull up one other document for there was a smaller grant that deerfield got that was title one related and those funds are a little bit more restricted as to what they can be spent on because they really follow the title one guidelines and their grant or their covid related but it's, it's not the same as the other grant we received. So we did also get um, the Coronavirus Response Act uh, grant, which was Grant 102 through DESE, and that was almost $70,000. Okay. Um, a good chunk of that is right now earmarked to be spent on technology, um, about 25,000 of that. And then there's some other facilities related needs that we're going to take care of. Tina would like to have additional water bottle filling stations put in so that students can easily fill water bottles. Um, with the increase in laundry, because we're using some cloth materials to do cleaning, um, yeah. we are looking to purchase a new washer and dryer. Um, okay. And then potentially so, some of the HVAC expenses that we have had. So. That facilities line we're estimating right now um, is around 30,000. There's some instructional materials that are needed for kids to work remotely for um, math workbooks instead mm -hmm. of buying textbooks, but we are finding that additional like paper materials are needed. Yeah. Um, yeah. There was a purchase of some things to support um, I would call it morale, Tina, I guess, you know, like swag kind of things. Like the kids yep. went home with, you know, DES personalized face masks as yep. PPE. Yep. And, um, you know, so that was like another 5,000 that was spent there. We had to purchase some equipment to um, help with school lunch service because school lunch is being served in the classrooms. Right. Uh, so that 70,000 from the state is yep. just about gone at this point and we haven't necessarily bought everything yet but tina has mapped out how she wants to it's spend encumbered. that money yeah it's encumbered and then do you yep. um so and then the title one that's different than the title one that so the 70 was the desi the covid money title right. one was about how much did we get for that um i can look it up i actually don't remember that one off the top of my head and do, tina do you know the answer to that because curriculum really worked with that money more than i have been that's for pd 
yep. um, and yep. planning purposes along those lines. But I can certainly find out that number for you. Um, at a minimum, I know it was 20,000 oh, because okay. that was the minimum that you got. And if you had Title I students, which I think Deerfield was getting a small oh, amount of Title I funding, right. it went up a little bit. So um, if I had to guess somewhere between 30 and 40,000. Okay. Yep. All right. So is that the rape grant? No, the um, oh, I don't know. They it's called the Esser grant through Desi, okay. um, but it's COVID related. And it was used a lot more towards the curriculum stuff, and then in, instead of yeah. like PPE. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah, that sounds good. And, and Shelly, I just wanted to just as you're, as you're talking, just for the public's uh, perspective on this, we can't offset our budget with this money. So it has right. to be COVID. So you're, if if I was a, a third party listing this, I'm like, my God, you're spending like, you know, I heard, <laughs> you, know, the, I heard you know, the things are going to be, the economy's going to be tough next year, that kind of thing. You're yeah. spending, 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 but we have to spend it on things COVID related or we give the money back. So if right. we can purchase we these things, way. things such as technology that will last us longer and take advantage of that as well as apply it to our COVID needs. I just kind of want to say that I was just make sure everybody's clear on that because if you're sitting back on what is all the spending going on for these mm -hmm. um, that kind of explanation. Yeah, and it has to be unbudgeted expenses. Like Darius said, you can't offset your operating budget with it. So, you know, these are really things that have been an additional cost for the school or will help the school function in a higher fashion given the hybrid learning model. Right. Yep. And then so you'll still have needs on top of uh, on top of kind of that stuff that you listed out you had some ppe some other technology um yeah and here's the the tricky part is that as of right now the state has said to us you have to spend it by december 31st mm -hmm. yet we don't know if there's more funding coming and we also have no idea what the impact as we go through the winter and into the spring is going to be if we need more things that we may not have money for but you know yeah. we're, we're restricted as to when we can spend it so we're trying to you yep. know, have forethought and plan yeah. properly, but. I think that's what's happened. We're trying to like, well, we have it, but we're, you know, we don't know what we're gonna, as we start to open up here and our other departments start to open up, library, senior center, that kind of thing, what expenses we're gonna have there too. But um, but we definitely wanna help. I mean, our, our main goal is education for sure and to help, to help as best we can. So, okay, great. Well, we'll keep working on that together. And I would say at this point, we probably spent Ten to fifteen thousand dollars on PPE, and most of that has been put into the um, school choice fund for now. And some of that is what we'll be submitting to the town yeah. to help us, um, because if we can free up those school choice funds, and there's no additional grant funding, we'll at least have those available for the spring if we have to make more purchases. Great. Yeah, that sounds great. Okay, thank That's, you. Uh, thank, thank you, Shelley. That's uh, great planning and good coordination with Tina and everyone on uh, yeah. getting things done. Um, one one quick question, Shelley, it's one that I bring up every year when I look at school choice. We have a thousand dollars set aside for arts partnership. Is yeah, so normally in in prior years, you guys have spent, I think, like seventy five hundred or at least allocated about that amount, I think. Um, mm -hmm. Last year, you didn't spend nearly as much in Deerfield. So what I figured I would do was start with what we had spent last year. So I plopped that thousand dollars in there. You know, we certainly could increase that budget number if we needed to. I didn't have any idea what the arts partnership was going to look like this year, given COVID. So I thought we would take it slow, but we certainly have wiggle room to add if we need to. Mm -hmm. Well, um, you know, that's just, uh, I just typically have remembered 5,000 to $7,500. That's why I was asking. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, I'd like to get a sense from the committee is that if as the, as the year progresses, would that be a, a good number for Tina and Shelly to keep in the back of their minds is yes. 5,000 to 7,500 if they want to change this school committee, school choice uh, number for uh, arts partnership? I, I would be behind that. I would support that. Yep. I see most everyone's nodding their heads. I can't see Mary nodding her head anymore. But just what's that? I said, of course, Tina's going to nod. Yeah, you just you just tripled it. Well, I, I know <laughs> Tina's going to nod. Yes. <laughs> My question was addressed to the committee, of course. So, well, thank you, thank you, Shelley. Um, a good summary, and uh, it's good to see we're we're staying in line. Any idea when the Chromebooks are coming in? 
or have they? Um, they're not in. Uh, we're still waiting. And the last I had heard, Tina, I don't know if you heard different, was hopefully end of October, early November. But it, it's not a, a problem that's specific to us. It's across the right. state. No, I, I know. Them. It's across the country. Yeah. Um, from what I'm being told. So it's kind of like the contractor I'm waiting to have come and do some work at my house. It keeps putting me off. So <laughs> anyways. Okay. Um, the next item on the agenda. Thank you again, Shelly. Uh, next item on the agenda is public comment. And under the new public comment format, uh, we did have one submission. And I, what I'd like to do is read it into the record. And then... Um, I'll see if I can get a copy to Tina. I think it would be nice to share it with staff and Darius, if you wanted to share it with staff as well. But this is um, from Rich Allium and it's uh, dated October 4th, 534 p.m. Public comment. Hello and good evening. I just wanted to extend my gratitude toward the members of this committee for the teachers, administrators, assistants, custodians, nurses, and everyone else for all their hard work and dedication to the students and families in our community. The beginning of this school year has been a huge undertaking, and I really want you all to know that you are appreciated. With gratitude, Richie Allium. So um, Thanks. That, that is the uh, public comment for the evening. Um, so. <clears throat> We move on to unfinished business, um, anti-racism and equity committee update. Hey, everybody. Chelsea. Um, I don't think I've been to the Deerfield School Committee meeting yet, so well, I'm welcome. Kelsey Crop. I was going to introduce you, Kelsey. Hmm? Let me introduce you. <laughs> oh, I was just going to introduce myself, but sure, you go for yourself, it. But it's nice when someone introduces you, it makes you feel should make you feel all good. Um, yeah. so Kelsey is a um, guidance counselor at the middle of, at the frontier, and Kelsey joined us right in the beginning and took a leadership role um, in our um, anti-racism and equity committee. Um, she's now one of the co-chairs and is going to join us tonight to give us an update about where things are going. Wonderful. Thank you, Kelsey, for your work so far and joining us tonight. Thank you for having me. Um, and I will try and focus more on the things that are directly impacting our um, elementary schools, since that's what you guys are probably most interested in. Um, we're really excited with the professional development work that the elementary schools are doing. Um, this is gonna be their third week of their small group professional development. So teachers have self-selected into groups that are focusing either on the history of racism in America um, or white privilege and identity. So the history of racism in America groups are focusing on um, topics such as the genocide of indigenous peoples, how the South was able to rewrite slavery and civil war history and misconceptions of the civil rights movement um, and how all of those things tie into our understanding of American history um, and then our way, the way that we teach American history because of that. Um, and then the white privilege and identity Sub, or, um, subgroup is focusing on understanding race as a social construct, white affirmative action, color blindness, um, and of course, white privilege. So that's more of a self-reflective um, group. Mm -hmm. So, so far the feedback from that has been really positive. Um, most folks seem to be really engaged um, and really appreciating the work that they're doing in there. Um, from a curriculum perspective, um, our curriculum subcommittee met last week they are working on definitions that we can use as a district. So from the elementary all the way through the high school level to have some definitions of common terms so that all of our students are using the same vocabulary and using the same working definitions so that we have um, we have a foundation that we can talk about and, and work from, that we're not having to reinvent the wheel and keep having to redefine things, um, that we're sort of all on the, pa all on the same page there. Um, one of their big goals this year is also looking at the diversity that we're using in our literature, whether that's uh, what's available in our school libraries, what's actually being taught as part of the English curriculum in the classroom, and also just what books are available in the classroom for students to be looking at uh, when they have that free time and making sure that we have a, diver a diverse representation um, in those books. Um, the middle school is using stamp from the beginning as their curriculum this year. 
they're using that in both um, the English classes and the social studies classes. So we're very excited about that. Um, and then for science, the I don't I think it was just the high school science department um, participated in an anti-racism uh, conference over the summer that spoke specifically about um, the role that science has played in perpetuating racism um, and how we can kind of start to dismantle that and how we teach it. So they've been really excited about that and they've been bringing it to the curriculum um, committee meetings. So we're starting to look at that on a larger scale of, okay, how can we how can we talk about these these topics in subjects that you wouldn't really think have any connection mm -hmm. to it? Um, so that's been some pretty some pretty cool conversations happening there. Um, for our school culture committee, we're actually looking for more elementary voices in our school culture subcommittee. So um, we'll be reaching out to our committee as a, as a larger whole because we do have more elementary folks on the larger committee and then also out to the individual schools to say, hey, is anyone interested in joining us? Um, because right now we are a little bit high school centered on that particular subcommittee. Um, but things that do impact the elementary school that are happening there, we've gotten our peer leadership program back up and running. Um, so that is ninth through 12th graders um, who went through a program last year that we're continuing this year about um, facilitating discussions. The idea being that those students can then lead small group discussions with younger students, because we know that it's much more fun to listen to a cool high schooler than it is, you know, to a teacher. So we probably won't be able to get into the elementary schools with those students until next year, um, but they are prepping and continuing their facilitator training this year with the intention of leading these groups in the elementary schools. That's great. Great. Do you, do you foresee a, a um, forum in the future as you kind of flush out a lot of this stuff? Do you do you foresee um, an event or a Zoom meeting or a seminar or something like that where more of the um, the general public, the school community teacher, uh, you know, parents and um, guardians, grandparents can get together and kind of learn a bit of what you're learning and what you're kind of some, some of the things that you're finding in how, you know, I, it just fascinates me how science is, you know, has, has played a role in this. So I'm like, well, how does that play a role? You know, and so I'm, I'm interested. And I'd so be curious to see if, you know, down the road, will you plan, you know, kind of a seminar, or a breakout, you know, a, a, an evening where people could kind of come on and, and understand what you've been working on and, you know, how it can help. I think that would be amazing. Um, I think we're not quite there yet, but yep. this is also something that, you know, this is not a just this year thing. This is right. an ongoing thing. Hmm. Um, so yes, I think, especially as our staff dig more into the professional development. Um, I think that would be amazing. And I think it would be awesome if we had student presentations so that students yeah. can talk about what they're learning. Great. Uh, I would definitely see that as something we can do. Great. That sounds exciting. Thank you for your work. Yes. It sounds like uh, very good progress is being made. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so it, just one question. It, as, as this work goes along, how does it translate to the classrooms or will it this year? Or is it more in, you know, work that's being laying a foundation either for next year or for later this year or what, what exactly is happening? So the focus this year is more laying the foundation because there's a okay. lot of work that the staff needs to do before they're comfortable even broaching these topics. Mm -hmm. Obviously. Um, so this year is a lot of heavy PD, but we are starting to see it kind of trickle into the classroom already um, in terms of the making, like bringing in some more diverse books to just have them for students to look at. Mm -hmm. um, and at the high school, we just announced today that um, for the FERCOG coalition or communities that care coalition mm -hmm. um, is doing, they're hosting a screening of a documentary called I'm not racist. Am I? Um, the evening of Monday, October 19th. So we are going to have all of our students from seven through 12 watch that documentary and then have a discussion the following day. Um, so that's being streamed for free through GCC. 
Um, and then it's also going to be broadcast on the local channels. So the documentary itself follows a group of high schoolers in New York City that committed to this year long program um, where they were doing some intense racial discussions um, and really unpacking privilege and, and looking at what that means. Um, so it's a little bit heavy for elementary schoolers, but we will make that information available if there are staff or parents who are interested in watching the film. That's great. Great. Okay. Well, thank you again for joining us this evening. Thank you very much for having me. And providing an update and for your work on this very important committee. Thank you. <laughs> so, update on school opening. Is this Tina? I think that's me. This is actually going to double as my principal's report too, because we know how to get things done now. <laughs> Great. So um, we entered phase two of reopening plan yesterday, and with that in-person um, teaching moved to full days. We reinstated our regular dismissal times, removing um, staggered release, and now routines have since the routines have been established, and we're looking at examining the feasibility of removing the staggered arrival times. Um, full days have provided us with an opportunity to run through our new lunch routines, which involves a lot of hand washing. Uh, recess is under a little bit of development as we train social distant games such as shadow tag and walking routines. Um, at this time, we have almost 200 devices that's been distributed to students. Um, laptops in the classroom labs have been reallocated to teaching teams. Teachers have clickable classrooms and Google Classrooms up and running that support students and families as they navigate our remote learning platforms. Our internet cafe, albeit small, is supporting staff children and those students with no internet access at home. Our attendance rates are high with most of our um, students attending synchronous lessons remotely and um, their in-person time. We have a tracking system in place to ensure that we make contact with every student or every family. Um, and everything is going as good as expected, and we're holding our own. That's great. Students are happy to be back. I think the educators are overjoyed to have students in the building. Uh, I think the biggest hurdle we have now is teachers feeling comfortable. And, um, you know, because with anything that, that's new, there's a credible amount of learning involved and, um, and the feeling of insecurity as they attempt the new platforms and instructional models and strategies. But although that they're feeling like, uncomfortable or unsettled, they're knocking it out of the park. Like, uh, you know, Rich yeah. Allium is like noticing it. We've got a lot of family um, saying, families uh, emailing us and calling just to say, like, they are just super impressed. Um, you know, they, they are working tirelessly. They have determination and grit. They, they have left no child behind. They're supporting each other. Like, they've really come together. But with that, I'd also wanted to thank um, families. Our DS community support has been incredible. We have gotten droves of donations and supplies, positive feedback, um, and, and patience and understanding as we pivot and shift. Like the families have been great too. So, you know, I just wanted to thank both of them and give a shout out to the teachers and acknowledge that we see them and their dedication and determination. And they really are making a difference. And I think, I think we're doing fabulous. <laughs> so, yeah. That's all I got. <laughs> It's so much better than than like. Let me give you all the problems we're having right now. We can't be. We can't figure any of this out. Uh, it's so nice to hear that you're. You know, you're, you're figuring it out. And I know it's sure. challenging. And we knew it was going to be. And um. And and we'll still learn and change as we go. But it's nice to find that. Find out that you know the staff are finding a way to make it happen. And um. And we just want to support them any way we can. So it's great. Yeah, and thank you for your support along the way. It's been fabulous. And I think without you, we couldn't do it. But. Um, you know, we have little glitches, but we're making it through no big hurdles. Great. That's great. Great to hear. Oh, you're uh, mute, muted, Ken. Here you go. I know now that you've gone to the full, full day schedules, it's going to be a little bit easier for parents to figure out where their children are supposed to be and what the schedules are from week to week. I've seen a lot of um, parent chatter on the Facebook Deerfield uh, parents group, uh, confusion as to what their schedules are for their kids. And um, it's, it has to have been, I mean, tough and frustrating for some. And I'm glad to hear that you're working through it. And overall, things are very positive. So 
that's great to hear. This is what we had hoped when we when we went to hybrid. And I know that Darius and, and your team uh, coming in with the phased in rollout on on the hybrid model has been, you know, I think was the right way to do it. So I think the community is more than appreciative of, of your efforts. And it sounds like we're making really good progress. So glad to hear it. <clears throat> Anything else from anybody? If not, we'll go to an update on the rain garden. This is just a really, a real quick one. Um, <clears throat> I will, we, we did get that MVP grant last year and the work was done over the summer and we never really talked about it at the September meeting because we were so overwhelmed with everything else going on. Um, so I just wanted to, you know, I'll just quickly just show the map. So next time you're around the school, you can take a look at it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, uh. Maybe. Uh, this is the two spots where they put in um, oh, yeah. using the MVP grant. This is where they did the storm um, to capture the storm water. So in, when you go around the loop here on the side of the building, you can see that they put in a rain garden there. Um, and if you're in the back parking lot, you can see they put in um, basically, I guess they call it a recharge um, runoff or um, stormwater there. And again, this, these are part of the, Trevor probably could talk about the the many grants, the, the many projects throughout town that they were doing, but these are the ones that were um, uh, slated for Deerfield Elementary. Um, again, looking at the MVP grant is, you know, basically getting uh, community preparedness regarding, you know, the increased amount of rainwater that we're getting through in the recent years and how that's all rushing into Bloody Brook causing flooding. And if we can slow down that rainwater from our big areas that are producing water, um, we can help out the environment. So that's what's happening there. So um, how do I get myself out of here? Uh, <laughs> so really straightforward. So yeah, kind of just that, that, that no, so that's kind of been completed there. Um, we are looking at stuff about um, the whole kind of project got put on hold, but you know, we're gonna talk, it, when we start looking at our capital projects for next year, um, you know, you know, we'll probably have to have a really kind of better understanding what the budget looks like. I think, you know, it's going to be a year where I think we're going to have to be very conservative with our capital projects and our capital planning. Um, but, you know, we're talking about the entrance of the school. And right now it's just one big piece of asphalt. Maybe there's some other stuff mixed in there. But again, maybe looking at that being getting some grant money for, you know, water runoff as it's a big catch basin for water, which causes flooding and cause, you know, if we can get a way to disseminate that water within our planning to improve that, um, that entryway, which is on our plans. We'll talk about that more in the future, but this is, you know, things that, things that we're looking at in the future, looking at MVP money. Um, it's being more and more, it's more and more competitive than it's ever been. And <clears throat> um, again, that's kind of coming down the road, but not tonight. Yeah. We, we have over for the town, uh, you know, over the last, I think there was five rounds of um, MVP money and Deerfield was the first town in the in the state to uh, become MVP certified. And then also, um, we have been get, we have received about a hundred percent of any grant we had applied for. But since all the other communities realized that you can pay for engineering and uh, construction work, you know, a lot of other towns got on the got on the bandwagon, and now they're sharing it. So our last round, while we got the engineering for. Um, to do the engineering work for our, you know, a green parking lot at Frontier and, and different things around town, we did not win the grant to actually do the work. So, so there's some, um, but we'll, you know, we'll keep trying. And, and that that front of the of of DES is a is just a, a prime example of how we could manage that water that comes off of all that square footage of roof and kind of gets all icy in the front there. And so I think I think we'd come up with a nice plan to make ways for the kids to line up in the morning and also, you know, handle that water that comes off. So I think we'll get a good plan for that in the future. Great. <clears throat> Very good. <clears throat> Let me miss my next page. Um, MASC, uh, new business. MASC, MASS, Joint Conference, nominate an official delegate. 
and I know it's now a virtual conference, so it might mm -hmm. be easy to find someone that might want to attend, easier to find someone that might want to attend. Um, so it is a virtual conference, but the joint meeting in which you're voting for a representative would be <clears throat> Friday, November 6th at 315 is when the meeting is. So it's, you know, it's not whether or not you can attend the whole conference, but whether or not you want to attend the um, the meeting, the joint meeting. Again, I don't know what the topics are this year, but it's at November 6th at 315. I don't know if anybody on the committee would have an interest in it. Um, I I won't be available, unfortunately. I'll be out of town. So. <clears throat> I mean, if no one if no one else wants to do it, I, I'm, I'm happy to do it this year. I didn't go last year, I think. Um, and this, I'm going to have to drive all the way to Cape this year, so I could I could probably swing it. Unless, you know, Carrie or anybody else wants to do it this year. I'm not seeing anybody raising their hands, Trevor. Oh, Carrie? Well, I, it's a, I'd like to in theory, um, but to be perfectly honest, it's my birthday, and I don't really relish the oh. idea of spending... Oh come on! Call after I get out of work. Well, my my <laughs> gift to you, Trevor, Carrie. You... My gift to you, Carrie, is that I will do that for you. <laughs> Carrie, why don't Thank you make you. the nomination? <laughs> yeah, there you go. All right, I nominate Trevor as the official delegate to the MASC Joint Conference. <laughs> Great. All right. I can't remember. Do I Second. get seconds on? Yeah, there's a second. second. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> Thank you, Trevor. <laughs> Welcome. Okay, we have a nomination. I will uh, close nominations and uh, we'll do a roll call vote. Uh, Trevor? Yes. David? Yes. Carrie? Yes. And Mary? Yes. Okay, it's unanimous. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Snow days. So I don't know. So other, I'm taking the lead from area communities that I'm seeing that they, they brought this to school committee, school committee voted. So we back it up. The commissioner has said that this year you may do remote learning on snow days for this year only. It's kind of like every other kind of MOA we have with everything else for this year only, we're going to allow this. So they, they, you know, as you know, in the past they had blizzard bags and they stopped blizzard bags. Um, now they're saying, you know, with remote learning, you can have snow days as remote learning. So while it seems like a small kind of thing, the question is, do we, as a district, just, I mean, this, is a, this is not a voting thing. It was just a discussion. Just want to get people's thoughts on it. Um, the state of Rhode Island just basically said there'll be no snow days this year. They just made a state decision. And of course, our lovely state likes to do everything locally, um, um, which is kind of, which is nice sometimes. I can't figure out when that's nice, but um, it's nice sometimes. The state of Rhode Island just basically said, we're not going to have snow days this year. Every, every snow day will just be a remote day, and we'll figure it out. Um, and now I'm starting to see uh, uh, school districts across the state, school committees are either voting on it or the superintendent's making a general announcement. I don't have any real guidance on which way to go on it, but I figure at least have a discussion here to hear what people's thoughts are. Um, and I kind of just wrote down some some of the biggest, some of the major challenges. So the challenges of is one if there's a lack of internet for either the teacher or the student, okay? And can we do a blizzard bag in its place? So a blizzard bag would be something. The difference is you're not going to be doing synchronous learning on on. You won't need the internet when I talk about the blizzard bag. So we could possibly have those kind of things. Most storms don't catch us by surprise unless it's on a Monday. So we kind of have an idea where we can do a last minute prep. Um, the teacher's ability to teach remotely and students ability, you know, um, on those particular days because of power and that kind of thing is a challenge. The other issue is that we don't have a lot of snow days, but we do have a lot of two hour delays. I'm kind of the two hour delay king in the area. Um, <laughs> and so or, where we can't really do a hybrid model with a two hour delay because you're doing students at half your students are at home, half your students are in person, you have transit issues. I mean, you're going to spend the whole, there's going to be such a chaotic mess that you're better off just doing remote and getting some solid, some solid learning that data and trying to get these different groups, that kind of thing. So you are talking about more than just like, I don't know, we had like three snow days last year. Maybe it was only two. I don't remember before the closure. Um, 
but we, you know it's going to be more. So you're talking about there's going to be like you know five, six, seven of these remote only days if that's what we decide to do. So I don't know. I was just looking for thoughts on that, and then um, and whether or not it should be voted by the school committee. I don't even know. You know, to be honest with you. <clears throat> Uh, that's a great question. I, I'll give my thoughts on it. I, I, you know, I was looking at this and thinking about it. We're set up for remote, but my, my concern would be moving forward past this year. I could see where it might be a model to try this year, but when we moved to hopefully back to full-time school and everyone's back in the classrooms, um, how would remote work? Because we wouldn't be as set up technologically to just switch over to remote easily. Right. So, and to clarify, the, the commissioner said for this year only you're allowed to do this and then they'll make a right. decision later on regarding future years. So if we did make a decision, it would be for this year, um, for this year only. Part of me kind of feels like kids have been robbed from so much this year to give kids a snow day. It's kind of like, a, I don't know, I just feel like you know, you're right. We, we don't have power and, and all that kind of thing. Um, something's nice about rolling over in bed and just having a snow day for the kids. But um, yeah, I agree with you. Trevor. What's that? Crafty. <laughs> what was that, Carrie? Oh, I'm just saying I agree. It's like a morale boost for kids. Like yeah, have something, something yeah. as a prize yeah. to get through this. I know, but I like do. Kind of like a dress down day at uh, work yeah. or you know, casual yeah. dress days. I always thought that was one of the best benefits you could give and it didn't cost anything. But, yeah. Uh, huh. So, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I, you know, I do feel like we are set up and we could we could rock and roll with it. You know, you could do more and, and keep rolling along. But I just kind of feel like it's been such a rough year for everybody. And, um, you know, I mean, it depends. Like, if it becomes a miserable winter and we're having them every, you know, three days, then maybe we want to think about that. I, I would almost leave that up to Darius and say, look, you know, you've been such a great judge with a lot of this. I'm, I'm good with it. You know, whatever you think. And like, you don't want to do it all on you. <laughs> as, a, as a thought, what if you, what if we still had snow days, you know, for the, the truly big storms that you, he would, you know, we would not normally have brought anyone in, but on a two hour or one hour delay day or a 90 yeah. minute delay day, right. we go to remote. That, and that way you don't have to deal with the public safety issues of um, vehicles and uh, yeah. everything else driving in, in inclement weather. Uh, yeah. But the students are getting it and getting their, you know, classroom time. Yeah. And it becomes a, a full day and, the, and there's no no delay. Everyone's on the same schedule. So you'd either announce a snow day or announce a remote day. I don't know if that's gonna be possible on the televisions though. They, they're gonna have to set up a new category on the menu for you, Darius, or whoever does your phone call for you. Right. Um, but, yeah. I mean, the good news is 90%, I would say 90, even more than 90% just get the robocall, call and that's how they move. So communication will figure it out. Yeah. Oh, and that's true. The robocalls will do it. Yeah, whatever we do, I want it to be simple. Because, yeah, yeah. You know, we, you know, as we even talked about the reopening of school, if we we're going to do a hybrid model again, we're going to do it differently because we're going to make it a lot more simple. You know yeah. what I mean? And I liked our phasing approach, as we were talking about before, Ken. But people were confused because we tried to do a lot, trying to meet every little need within it. Right. Like you know, let's have something very basic. If we're expecting yeah. range of snow. You'll have a snow day. We'll shut down. Less yeah. than that, it's a remote day. Something I'll, I'll come up with something, but I'm, I'm just getting yeah. feedback, and I'm doing this with all the committees. So yeah, yeah, you know, it's yeah. just a discussion, yeah, okay. and we can move on. I just want to hear thoughts. No, that's good. Can I just be a little more of the Grinch? Grinch on that stuff? Um, <laughs> sure. <laughs> I mean, one another approach is obviously that we missed a lot of school days this year. Yeah. Um, and so there's no harm, obviously, since we, as we've heard such good things about how we're doing, there's a, you know, there's a system and there's a, uh, it's only going to get better, I think, for, for how we're all handling the remote learning. And then, Darius, your propensity for two-hour delays is going to be problematic, if, obviously, and you just touched on that, uh, Ken. If those are turned into snow days too often, because, right. we, because we're not going to do any two-hour delays anymore, then that's going to be a problem. So I think we have to plan for 
remote snow days. And yes, you know, Ken, maybe there's some variation where occasionally it's a non, you know, a non-academic one. But I think there's going to have to be days where remote learning because of the weather. And yeah. it's that they yeah. will be remote learning. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I would think as as the decision is being made, you've got to where Darius might be considering a two hour or one hour delay. It just becomes to me, it would just become a remote day. Mm -hmm. And then the days that would have truly been a snow day. The odds are good. Some parent is probably going to be home anyways on a day like that. So uh, anyways, yeah. Yeah, if you're I'm sure Darius will come up with something. Yep. Another hybrid plan. Stupendous. Hybrid plan. <laughs> I'll, give you, I'll give you three separate plans and then I'll have right. a meeting to vote on it. We'll do that in yeah. November, all right? Yeah. We'll have a joint meeting to discuss the three plans for. And I'd like to see a phase okay. roll in of them. Yes. <laughs> so. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. It's good just to hear feedback on that. It's also people are watching and know we're thinking about it and about the different part. It's not just, it's not a simple, it's not a simple decision sometimes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe, yeah. Okay. So, how do you get here? Um, so I think we're now down to, under new business, um, policy ACAB, which is the harassment policy. Yeah, so th this is a this is a, a lengthy one and a big one um, and a law. So um, there are different ways you can um, approach this policy, but basically a new law was passed, and the, and the major changes you'll find in this, um, it's very lengthy. Um, um, but yes. basically, the law narrowed the definition of sexual harassment under Title IX. Yeah. It limiting the obligation to investigate complaints to only conduct that occurred on school program or activities not related to off-campus conduct. Um, it talks about the mandatory response obligation of schools and in in providing support measures. Um, there's a change in the, in the standard for school liability when it comes to harassment and its job to follow up on sexual harassment and harassment. Um, there are more detailed grievance procedures They'll alter the way the school process and responds to complaints. One of those things is the investigator, the person who's overseeing the investigation does no longer does the investigation. So now I have to have multiple people, as you'll see in the document, who are responsible for following through on, on investigations of harassment and sexual harassment. Um, there's a whole section about how hearings are now optional um, <clears throat> and how written questions are required for K-12 schools. Um, there's also the standard, what standard of evidence is going to be used in the determination, um, a preponderance of evidence or clear and convincing evidence. So it gets, there's very, a whole lot of uh, legal jargon. And then um, both schools must offer both parties an appeal from a determination regarding responsibility. So those are the highlights in this. I mean, how many pages is this thing? About um, you know, eight, or, eight or nine pages. Oh, wow. uh, we need to kind of go through it is an important policy because um, it's one of those policies that we need to have on the books. It's one of those policies we have to follow when we have, um, you know, uh, allegations or uh, of, of just anti discrimination and harassment um, and sexual harassment, because those are also become liability issues that we face as employers as well. So, um, so it's a heavy one. They changed the law. This is what the our attorney came up with as. Um, what they gave out as their response to that law for a new policy. So it is the first reading today. I do suggest we do the two reading. There's no need to waive that. Um, and kind of you guys use some time to go through it. And if you have questions, if you have questions on this one, email me in advance so I can contact counsel on that because I don't know the stuff in and out. If we ever have such an event, we would be on the phone with counsel to walk us through our own policy to make sure that we're hitting each step along the way. You know, you I mean because it is a complex thing um, in serious. These, these relate to uh, children and employees, if I understand this right. Correct. Thank you. Uh, okay. About the only, Darius, about the only comment I had as I was reading it um, on my first pass was 
is it required to put the names of the people that are serving as the Title IX coordinators and the, um, you know, everything else? Because I just think Title VI coordinator, I'm sorry, and Title IX coordinators, et cetera, et cetera. I, because I just think you have the policy. That means every year or every time there's a change, you've got to remember this is just one more, um, you know, policy red about. tape nightmare that you've got to, that you've got to remember to do. So I think it's a good point. It is a good point. Um, I, I'll find out about that. That's a good point. Um, you know, you can have an addendum or something. I don't know, but, uh, yeah, it's, it just becomes something that means you're going to be revising this at least every year. Well, the po uh, can the policy does say though that you are supposed to post in the schools uh, who those coordinators are? So yeah. it's, right. It's it's yep. not necessarily. We do we do that right now. Right now, if you go to our website, you'll see that you can find the Title IX policy. Um, you know, is Karen Ferrandino was our Title IX officer on that. So we mm -hmm. could post it on the website and just update right. it there rather than in the policy itself. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's all I was thinking of because it, you, you you're going to have to remember it for five committees <laughs> to uh, to point. change it consistently if right. there are any changes in those coordinators. So, <clears throat> anything else from anybody? No. Okay, well then the next item would be policy BEDH, first reading of this revised policy. I love them when they're all marked up in red. So, um, you know how this, you guys know this, this is where our, our committees are, are, are broken in the way we kind of do this business, but in the sense that I have to go to five different communities, get input, and then I come back with a, a response to the input rather than when we meet all together. And I know there's some advantages when we meet as a joint committee, but I also know right now, given doing joint committee meetings was not was well, not what the schools needed. I think we needed to have check-ins with each committee. So um, I put in new language, basically taking the feedback from each committee. And I'll be honest, I don't remember what this committee gave me for feedback, but right now what we did is we have, we changed the language for our remote meetings where you can provide it in writing, or you can ask to be invited to the meeting to be allowed to speak at the meeting. We do have the ability now to bump people out and to stop people from spamming onto the screens. So okay. um, um, people can request to be, come to our meeting and talk at our meeting and um, just let us know by 3 p.m. of the day of the meeting. And the reason why it's 3 p.m. is um, Donna Hathaway is the person who's notified on that on that list. And she, you know, she just like she did today, she checked it right before 4, um, before she left um, for her day at work. I think she even checked it again at home just to give her credit because she's probably watching. Um, so basically that's where we are for the model. Again, a first reading on that. So it gives yeah. two methods, it allows people to come and speak in person where we can invite them in um, or provide people in, in something in writing. Um, I had talked about trying to figure out a way to do phone messages. I couldn't find a way that that was not an absolute mess to do five different ways for five different committees. Um, I thought now the fact that we can have the person come in, in person, um, this makes sense. Mm -hmm. yep. <clears throat> no, I think it does make sense. It's and it's you know more flexible than saying they have to do something twenty four hours in advance. Um, yep. I would just make a suggestion that you you could say public comments um, in the event that a regular uh, is held remotely. Public comments may be submitted in writing to the chair. And I would just say, or members of the public who would like to speak may request a meeting but invite by email. Just make it all one sentence. Sure. But that's just a editorial comment. Sure. Yep. Okay. Thank you. I think that's a good. Okay. Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Grant. You know what? That's the, um, that was that's the, the update on the range. Oh, guard. that's the MVP that we already talked about. Yeah, and we put it We just called it something different. Rain Gardens. Rain. <laughs> okay. 
So we are down to executive session. Um, I think we were going. We are going to have to break to executive session for hopefully a, a relatively short meeting. We all had a, a copy of the um, the item that we're going to be discussing when we reconvene. So I hopefully we can get through that pretty quickly. Um, I would entertain a motion to move to executive session pursuant to Mass General Laws Chapter 30A, Section 21A2 to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for contract negotiations with non-union personnel, the Gridco Transportation Company. This will be a separate closed meeting, uh, will not be live streamed. We will be returning to general session and having a vote when we come out um, and the, anybody that's attending at this point in time uh, that is not invited into the meeting if you want to wait we will be coming back out hopefully fairly quickly i know you're all dying to stay uh, stay online here uh, cool. and we will try not to provide entertainment this time around on executive session so uh, I'll, make, I'll make that motion Okay, Trevor. Second that. Okay, this requires, a, and we will be having Darius Modesto. Is uh, Shelly joining us? Yeah, Shelly's joining us too, please. Okay. Mr. Modesto and Ms. Pareta will be joining us. So, um, <clears throat> and Tina, you can, I, if just FYF, if this committee's done with you, we could probably say goodbye to you because you gave your principal's report. Yeah. You've already had a full day. Thanks, everybody. I will take that opportunity okay. to scoot out. Good. Okay. Have Thank you, care. Tina. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for okay. your time. Okay. Have a great night. All right. So uh, roll call. Trevor? Uh, Trevor McDaniel, yes. And um, David Sharp? Yes. Carrie Etchells? Yes. Mary Raymond? Yes. And Ken Cutterback, yes. We are moving to executive session, so we get to sign out. Okay, we've reconvened at 6.29 p.m. Uh, or 6.30 p.m., I guess. <clears throat> and we have one item on the agenda, the MOA. I mean, one more item before we get to Darius's report, the MOA between... Deerfield School District and Gripco Transportation. Do I have a motion to approve the MOA as written? With a, uh, I guess I would make that with with the adjustments that we that I think right. um, just to the paragraph as, number. Yes, in general. Yes, I would make that motion to approve the um, memorandum of understanding between you know as Deerfield plays into the Frontier Regional and Union School. School District um, and Gripco Transportation. I think you're going to have to explain what those adjustments are to general. Okay, so, the, numbering, so, the numbering issue within, right? Yes, there was a there was a numbering uh, issue as as um, as this um, memorandum of understanding and contract was written and 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 adjusted for COVID. There were some adjustments made, and then just the paragraphs are numbered um, inconsistent, or or there's a couple of duplicates. So it's just to kind of let me let me make a suggestion. We would be approving the motion to approve the MOA between Deerfield School District and Grip, Grip Code Transportation as corrected in executive session. Thank you. So we have a motion. Do we have a second? No one's jumping on the, the opportunity. What's that? Was that Second. Mary? Yeah. Any further discussion? Bless you. Good uh, Hearing none, all those, oh, I'm sorry. We'll do a roll call vote. Trevor. Yes. Everybody's in different. David. Yes. Carrie. Yes. And Mary. Yes. And Ken, yes. So it is unanimous, 5-0 vote. And uh, thank you all for your efforts on that. Uh, and superintendent's report. 
Yep, so I did send out a superintendent's report and I'll, I'll kind of fly through it like I normally do and just pause and ask me questions. Um, um, right now, usually in the month of October, you get school improvement plans. Um, I'm basically requesting that we put this on hold until December. Um, the administration has been out straight um, and hasn't had a chance to meet with the school councils and such. I mean, a lot of the plans is getting the hybrid model off the ground and supporting families and such within that. So. Um, I'm asking that we wait till December to get those plans kind of put together. Um, I don't, and I don't know the procedure. I'm, I guess I'm kind of telling you we're going to wait till December to give you those plans. And if you want them next month, I can push it. But I think everybody knows where position yeah. we're in. Yeah. I did, um, Meg Birch, as you know, is our nurse leader or um, and or nurse manager. She has we we got her part time on a grant last year, as you can all remember. Mm -hmm. um, I have. Um, moved her to a full-time position as nurse leader. The amount of work around the COVID and, and tracking and giving support to our nurses and teachers and, and parents. And um, I mean, she's working through the weekends, um, working with families and such that different cases come up or concerns about cases come up. Um, so we are we're gonna pay the majority of her salary through that grant. And Shelly, we're picking up the remainder from general budget, is that? Yeah, so we're gonna have to find the money to pay the rest of it, but it is, um, it is a position that we definitely need through this. And her being part time was not going to cut it. So she, she's um, been wonderful. Yes, she really has. It's it, it, she was someone born for that position that's for sure. She just doing a great job. Yeah. Um, I mentioned it earlier, but I am meeting with the town administrators. I met with them last week to talk about um, our finances, the COVID funding, and then. You know, knowing that this is going to be a difficult budget year ahead, just kind of laying down the groundwork there. But I just want people to know that I'm doing that. Um, I've also been attending the uh, biweekly meetings with the boards of health. I have one tomorrow morning. Uh, uh, Carolyn uh, Shores Ness has uh, been leading those with the board of health. His representatives from the boards of health from all the four towns, police, EMS, and then uh, um, school and different other health officials. So I just want to let you know I'm going on with doing that as well on the side. Um, I am still part of the new superintendent's, new superintendent's induction program, although I'm like a veteran now in training. <laughs> um, I still consider myself new. So we are, um, I've been doing the trainings there as well. And the you know, focus this year is obviously opening up in the COVID environment, as well as a focus on um, equity in schools, which has been you know, part of the focus in past years as well. And I'm also participating as an extension of that. The Donahue Institute out of UMass is doing a, um, is, is doing a kind of an assessment of, the, of its work on anti-racism and equity. And so I've joined that group as well. So um, Great. working through that. And I do want to thank, I know Tina mentioned the community donations. Um, I just want to thank the community for all the different items and monies that we provided to the school, um, each in our communities. And then today, actually today, the Franklin County Rotary stopped by and gave me 2,500 masks. Wow. Great. The Bezio families. Um, who came in and, and who kind of orchestrated the donation there. So I just wanted to kind of give a shout out to them. I'm sure there are a lot of other donations that Tina could have listed off as well. Um, but I just want to continue to thank people and we'll continue to take stuff. And then just the ongoing projects, um, you know, the case management of COVID in the community is taking up a lot of time. We are still negotiating with 38 and Frontier. I'm just talking about the different struggles that we have and the different types of management issues that we have. Um, with these different, um, with the hybrid and the remote models. Um, we normally in this meeting talk about the, the budget schedule and we talk about that, but that's really up in the air as well. Um, the state doesn't even have a budget yet for this year. So let alone what we can do for next year. So just know, I think next spring is going to be, everything's going to be pushed off months and it's probably going to be a faster right. year thing in the end to the end. And mm -hmm. given the numbers coming out of the state, it's going to be, it's going to be an ugly, it's going to probably be ugly too, in the sense of uh, yep. trying to figure out where we're going to get the money to, to keep what we got going. Um, you know, we're seeing the updating on policies. You'll see more coming in the future. You heard about the anti-racism and equity report. I also want people to know that our admin team um, is also creating its own professional development because I think it's a little bit different coming from leaders and what the teachers are working on. Some of it is definitely across. Um, but today we actually had a presentation from Dr. Elizabeth Pryor, who is a professor at Smith College, who talks a lot about the N-word and how it's used in school, how it's used in the educational set setting, 
um, within teaching curriculum and how how to make students comfortable in, in dealing with um, the N-word. And um, we had a long, an hour and a half discussion with her today, um, just talking about the different, um, the different um, areas that we need to work on with our staff and areas that we need to work on um, as an administrative team. Um, and it was just, it was a great conversation. She's a, she was a I, first time meeting her today and she was a wonderful person. So I just wanna thank her for joining us today. So we are having, we do have a full PD plan with a book study group and we're looking to create, a, get an outside consultant to work directly just with the administrative team. Cause I find the challenges very different um, um, that's happening there. So we're still, finalizing that. I think it's on our meeting agenda tomorrow to finalize. And I'll, I'll share that with you next month. Um, capital projects, we kind of briefly talked about that. Um, we'll be going through um, the Frontier track is is moving forward, but we'll be, you know, we'll be on Frontier. So don't worry about that, but we will be talking about the capital projects, the smaller ones, um, and what we're going to do with our scheduling. I am concerned about the overall budget for 22 on the town's end, and it may be a year we have to go light on capital expenditures, but I'll be looking for, um, you know, Trevor and your whole, the whole gang over there to kind of give me, give us what they want us to submit. You know what I mean? Is it, are we, are we full stoppage or are we just going to submit again? And then we'll see what kind of numbers we have. Right. Uh, and then, uh, I think I said the new superintendent program. I'm still, those are just kind of the, the calendar and reopening schedule. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're continuing sure. to look at getting us back to the next phase. So that's what I got. Great. Great. Okay. Well, thank you. Yeah. Uh, I, I just, oh, I'm not muted. Okay. I just wanted to say, Darius, um, Shelly, um, the, the job that the administration has done, the work that you've been doing all summer long and into the fall is is phenomenal and um, I, I know the community appreciates it i i heard it tonight um i certainly appreciate it and uh just um, kudos on a continued job well done it's it's mind-boggling to me the the hours that you guys have had to put in so congratulations and thank you for that work um yeah that's all I have on the agenda. Um, you, you mentioned capital projects. I know the capital planning committee in Deerfield is in a state of flux right now. The chairman has uh, left, and we're we're trying to piece things together on on how to proceed. But uh, we'll get to it, and we'll be able to review whatever is provided. So mm -hmm. I can entertain a motion to adjourn. Just real quickly on the capital. Oh. Um, I know we just. Uh, I know we just paid the bill for the flooring um and i want right. to know and maybe tina's not in i don't know if uh, darius does know do we um uh, we're probably still going to roll forward with some bathrooms and some more flooring right i think i think um i mean for next year we'd love to put in for that again i think um because that's yeah. been a constant we've had support for that i think there. i'm what i'm hearing and i'm and as i'm hearing and thinking at the same yeah. time i think we move forward with our capital plan Mm -hmm. And then we just basically, if it is a absolute crushing financial year, everything yeah, gets great. Great. at least you have your plan of what you're going to need the following year. You know, what I mean? yeah. a small amount through. I'm yeah. just being realistic. It's supposed to I be, agree. and maybe, or maybe the, maybe everything will get better real quick. And yeah, we'll see. Spend no, but I agree. We put in the plan, and then we find out can we can we move forward, or do we have to wait again? You know, yeah, for right. the, for, the, for a fall meeting or something like that, and see where we're at again. So. Great. That sounds great. So thanks for everything you guys are doing. It's awesome. Okay. Do we have a motion? Motion to adjourn. Second. And roll call, Trevor. Yes. David. Yes. Carrie. Yes. Mary. Yes. Ken. Yes. We are adjourned at 6.42 p.m. Thank you all.